Who here has ever been asked, why do you pray? Why do you pray five times a day? You know when, like, lots of times when I'm talking to somebody who's interested about Islam or something like that, and then I tell them, like, pray, we pray five times a day. They're like, five times a day? Farah, have you done da'wah tables? Okay, and so five times a day, you've never gotten that question? I try to fo first focus on the what comes before the Salah, like the Shahada, and like I make sure that they're ready for that next step. Okay. Once that next step reaches to them, then uh, me and like my other team members, what we try to focus on is like giving them an understanding of how the Salah benefits us. And we try to say, hey, you know, you don't have to do it all at once. Um, you can take baby steps, but we try to give them the significance of it. Tell them that like you get to converse with your Lord for like in f five times every day. So we just try to show them why it's so important. And at the same time, we try to not make it like pressure them to say that, you know, you have to start today. Beautiful. So it's something that is an opportunity to converse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day. Beautiful. Anybody else have any thoughts on why you pray five times a day? Here comes Abdullah. <laughs> uh, I always thought of it as, um, you know, we, we pray five times a day because we start from the, from the beginning of the day and then we reach uh, towards the end of the day. Each prayer sort of symbolizes like uh, protection from like the evil in this world. So with each prayer, it sort of, brings like a shield that Allah gives us in order to protect us from evil, just from anything bad that may happen to you in general. And also just to give thanks to our Lord and, and just things like that in general. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. One easy question to ask a person like that is how many times do you wash your hands a day? Like when, when, when this pandemic was raging, how many times were people disinfecting their hands? How many times a day? So more than five, people were walking around with hand sanitizer and if they touched anything, they would just immediately, right? And, and what was causing them to do that? What was causing them to do that? It was the fear of this virus, recognizing that this virus is something that is incredibly harmful, potentially harmful to an individual, maybe even fatal. And so they cared so much about keeping their hands pure. And so we believe spiritually there's something that's even more dangerous than any virus, and that's our sins. And the Prophet Sallallahu gave this beautiful example. He said, if there was a river that was next to you, 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 you lived by a river, and you bathed in it five times a day, would there be any dirt on you? Would there be anything? And they said, no, O Messenger of Allah. And he said, similarly, are the five daily prayers. You and I go out into this world, and as soon as we, I mean, you don't even have to walk outside of your house now. You just go like this, boom, the noob. Sins, right then and there. You just unlocked your phone, saw yourself, sins. <laughs> right? It's like, as soon as you step out into this world, you're, you're undertaking all of these sins that are coming to you every single day, every human being. And so the five daily prayers are prescribed to purify you. But not only do they purify you, they anchor you. They anchor you. Every single day we go out and it's Salat al-Fajr. You go out in the morning and, and, and you're reminded that your purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we're here. And then you go out into the world and you're you know, seeking your rizq, you are seeking your education, whatever it is. And then again, you are grounded, anchored again, that you are here to worship Allah. And also comes and it's rush hour traffic and people are trying to get home on their commutes. And again, it's remember that you are here to worship Allah. And then when you're amongst your family at home in sunset, Again, and then in the evening, again and again and again, you are being anchored that your purpose of life, if Allah had made the prayers, 50 prayers, which they were originally, and we had to pray every 30 minutes, because in 24 hours we would have prayed every 30 minutes, that would have been us doing what we're supposed to do. We were created to worship Allah. And so when it's only five, but not only that, Allah made it so that these prayers, again, are for us. Allah says, if the first of you and the last of you and the jinn of you and the human of you all had the most righteous hearts, that wouldn't take away, that wouldn't add anything to my word, to my kingdom, my dominion. And if the first of you and the last of you and the ins of you and the jinn of you, the human of you and the jinn of you all had the worst hearts, if we were all 
you know, seven billion devils walking around on this earth, that wouldn't take away. We don't benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshiping Him, but it benefits us. It gives us value. It gives us perspective. It gives us faith. It gives us uh, morality. It gives, it, gives us, uh, it gives us patience. It gives us perspective. All of these things are communicated to us. All of these things are gifted to us. When we, it gives us humility when we bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our everyday lives, we feel compelled to acknowledge people's exceptional achievements and moral excellence. When someone does something for us, we feel compelled to say thank you. And we, we feel slighted when we do something for people and they don't take the time to, to thank you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ In Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, why would Allah punish you if you simply had gratitude and if you believed? وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا And Allah Himself is shakir. Allah Himself increases. And He is the uh, all-knowing. And so, we are the ones who need to worship Allah. It creates for us a sense of inner peace. There's a lot of research with regards to those people who, wor who, who do worship, the spiritual fulfillment that they have, the peace that they have, the tranquility that they have, the anxiety that it decreases. And uh, there's a lot that could be said about, about this particular topic. But <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us a prescription and a dosage. The prescription, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he tested you and I with he tested you and I with desires that are both internally placed and externally motivated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for us the prayer and He made the dosage five, five doses a day. What's the illness that we're being saved from? The illness is the heedlessness that befalls our heart. We have a, a heedlessness that comes and it takes root in our heart and it spreads and the remembrance of Allah, so I want you to imagine heedlessness, like this lack of awareness of God, as a drought, okay? And your heart is the plane. And that drought, when it's extended, it can cause a person's heart to be like a, a barren wasteland. It's dry, it's, it's, it's like burning, and what, what's burning are, are people's desires, their hoa. It's taking them in every direction. And it's the equivalent of hot wind that passes over it. And what's rain? What's rain is the remembrance of Allah. And if the rain descends on it, then it grows again and it becomes lush. It becomes beautiful gardens. And the heart is like that. It becomes barren if it's void. It becomes like a desert if it's void from the remembrance of Allah. Loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing Him, remembering Him, calling upon Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِي لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Those beautiful verses in Surah Al-Hadid, chapter 57, verse 16 and 17, the chapter of iron. Allah says, has it not come that those who believe that their hearts be softened to the remembrance of Allah? Hasn't the time come that their hearts be softened to the remembrance of Allah? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the great companion of the Prophet he was the sixth person to accept Islam. He was that young man in Mecca who who you know, didn't really have a tribe and he was very frail as far as his, his body goes. So he, he wasn't someone who was necessarily a very strong companion as far as physically. He says, this verse came down when we were, had been Muslim for around four years. Four years. You know when a person accepts Islam or maybe when you start like Islam makes sense to you, you have such passion and such care and such excitement about the deen. You love everything about it. You're trying to practice it all at once. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is saying, we were Muslim for only four years and this verse came down. What's this verse saying? This verse is saying, hasn't the time come that your hearts be softened to the remembrance of Allah? Like already their hearts became hard. He's saying like we were already being warned of our hearts becoming I won't say their hearts became hard, but they were being warned of their hearts becoming hard. And Allah says, and that they not be like those who were given the book from before and a long-term past. فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ And their hearts became hard. وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ And many of them were transgressors. Many of them are transgressors. Because that's the problem. When a person's heart becomes hard, then the sweetness of worship is taken away. 
they still have the beard and they have the look and they have the they know all the lingo, subhanAllah, mashallah, la They have all of that. They've got all of that. Right? Sisters got the hijab and the ibai and the but on the inside, you'll find that the remembrance of Allah is actually very rare. Sit in a car with somebody for an hour, driving somewhere, and they won't mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they won't mention akhirah, they won't mention any of the things that actually soften the heart. They'll be sitting there talking about the rockets, or they'll be talking about some sports team here or there. And you hear, you see that a lot. Even amongst quote-unquote religious people, you see the lack of presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their conversation, in their day-to-day. -day. And so even though they pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts became hard. 